This is Mastering Mathematics with your teacher, Karen Weston. Hello, welcome again to another in the series, Mastering Mathematics. This is a program sponsored by the Ministry of Education, using its EBU unit, the Mathematics Center, and ABS Television. Of course, we are here to sensitize and to educate the entire populace. As you would know, I have been saying for weeks, one of my comrades have been slaughtered. But we are not without hope. And so, for the first time, guess what? With me in the studios are a bunch of serious looking teachers. <laughs> but these are really my trainers of trainer, who actually says to Miss Weston, Oh, this is what's happening in the primary division, and this is where we need an input. Today, I want you to see them, public faces. And right away, I'm starting with the introduction. And on my left, ladies first, they tell me. Still, they have this sort of thing. And it is Miss Willock, Gwendolyn Willock, and she is from T and Kernan. So we're going to hear something about that school. Next to her, in that bright blue, oh, lovely blue sky for the Caribbean, yes, we have Miss Alison Lydiot coming from Parham Primary. Next to Miss Lydiot, now we have the first of our male teachers doing a good job at Bendel's, and that is Mr. Davis. And next to Mr. Davis, I have my uncle. Yes, yeah, so will my uncle hold with Jesus at the hem and this one on the ground? It certainly will. So who do we have? Mr. Nigel Brown. And right here on my right, coming from Green Bay Primary School, we have Mr. Joseph. And serious looking scholarly <laughs> professor coming from Jennings Primary. We have Mr. Carlos Samuel. And bringing up, not least, but new one, new kid, you can call him on the block. We have Mr. Biles again, coming from Green Bay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mastering Mathematics. As I told you, education is innovative and creative, and we are not going to keep the things to ourselves. What's happening in education, it is a societal business. Today, we are here for dual role. Two things. Yes, the teachers thought that they were coming in for my emergency meeting, but this is an emergency meeting of the minds because I want them to express to you in Antigono exactly what I'm calling status of mathematics as it is in our primary schools right now. They're going to give us a little thing about what they're experiencing and what they hope we can still do for them. So I am teaching you the techniques, but I know you want to say, so what's happening in schools? And yes, I am bringing that to you today. At the end of this program, before we end this program, of course, we will reminisce and we will remember Sean Williams. We know that his burial takes place on or what you call his Thanksgiving service, takes place on Wednesday. And we will be there in our number. And I plan to follow him all the way, all right? Because we're going to make certain that this time he has a safe house. And in God's name, we do trust. And again, we ask you to lift up the family and to pray for them. So we begin, and of course, Everybody from the Ministry of Education, we do express our deepest sympathy to the family at this time. My cameraman is here and my timekeeper is here. I should think she's going to get away today, but tomorrow we're going to make certain that she's going to help the students in answering some of my mathematics questions. Although it is a gloomy time for them, you will see some of them shedding tears because even as we remember Sean, we can't speak about him without feeling this heaviness on our hearts. I can only see his smiling face because that is all I ever knew. I can only see him aspiring and challenging his students because that is all I ever knew. 
and I will be taking up the mantle for the students at all road in terms of the project to see that we will have an epitaph and a memorial to Sean in terms of coming up with our project. So, without further ado, we get into what we said we are going to start with, status of mathematics in Antigua and Barbuda. I don't know which one wants to start, although they say ladies first, only certain times ladies want to be first, all right? And they didn't know that they were coming for this, but Miss Weston always has something up her sleeve. So, I want to make certain that my teachers are comfortable. These are the guys I just call and, and yes, but my brain never shut off. We never go to sleep. And I said, yes, let's bring my teachers together and see what is happening with them and how can we at least pay our respect to Sean openly to the public. And in the meantime, he would want us to be talking about mathematics. And that is what we're doing today. So, gentlemen, ladies, tell us something about the mathematics in your school. And we can start with Mr. Joseph. Right away. Uh -huh. Tell the audience where you're from and what's happening in Green Bay. Well, as Ms. Swesson said, I'm Oliver Joseph, grades 5 and 6 mathematics teacher at the Green Bay Primary School. Well, at our school, mathematics is basically not where we want it, but it's getting there. Um, the teachers have now jumped on the bandwagon and they have started doing the new things that I've expressed to them that I would like them to do in the low grades so that as students get to me at the higher grade things would be easier and so my colleague Mr. Byers on the other end we will um, continue <laughs> and so we go straight over to Mr. Byers no yes 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 it's only what's talking what I see we need more is more parents involvement in the students one of the main problem is tables the children don't know their tables some of them can see but actually skipping like saying four eights four sevens and so on they can't jump and tell the answer one time and Lord, what I see, the teachers in the lower grades need to do, like if they don't understand something in mathematics, ask for the teachers for help. That will be the only way in which we are, we get a whole approach um, to get the children ready for the national assessment. Okay, and then from that, yes, we can go right away to Miss Willock. Good morning. And Kerner, yeah. Good afternoon to everyone. I'm Gwendolyn Willa, T.M. Kerner, School Grade 5 and 6 Mathematics teacher. Um, one of the things that I can say that we're doing at T.M. Kerner is to get the parents involved. Every term we have a parent teachers meeting for grade 6 students where we talk about how well the children are progressing, their weaknesses, and so we try to get the parents to assist us as much as possible in terms of homework and in terms of how well they can get the um, children to do what is required. Um, I've also invited parents to come into my classroom if they don't understand some of the topics that we're teaching to come in and to sit in with us so they themselves can understand, so they can help their students or their child or children to understand what it is that we are doing at school. And I think so far it's working. Yes, we still have our problems in terms of some of the children still not doing homework and we're hoping that, you know, in time we will overcome some of these problems. But I think once the parents are involved and once we have a parent-teacher's relationship, I think um, we'll go from strength to strength. And I'm not going to keep Carlos waiting any longer, all right? <laughs> Mr. Samuel is there saying, oh my gosh. So I'm going to jump right over to Mr. Samuel. <laughs> Good afternoon, I'm Carlos Samuel, <laughs> mathematics teachers in grades five and six at the Jennings Primary School. Uh, just last week, we had a, a meeting where we were trying to standardize the teaching of mathematics in all the grades at the school. And one of the problems that we have as well is a problem with the, the tables that the, stu the students need to know. 
Now, there's a ten. It's as Mr. Byers says. They have a problem saying like six states, but if you ask them six states, what they would do, they they count guys. six states <laughs> in order to get the answers. And <laughs> they're trying to get away from that, so they're going to try and organize a way for them to learn the tables on a daily basis. And the other things that we're trying to to get along with when it comes to mathematics, but so far the students are doing okay with the math. All right. Oh, well, now I see Alison Lydia to a little eye shining, wondering, oh, Lord. So let's jump right away to my hometown, Parham. Let's right. hear her. Good afternoon. I'm Alison Lydia, and I teach basics at Parham School. And what I want to see, not just for Parham School, but for the whole island on the whole, is for children to relate mathematics to everyday activities. We want them to look at the window and see a rectangle. We want them to look at the can of milk and see a cylinder. You know, we just want them to relate everything that they see around them to mathematics. Because mathematics is really a... a, 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 a foundational, foundational subject. Yes. yes. Foundational <laughs> subject. Everything that you do and you see, there's some maths in it and we want them to see that. All right, thank you. And I'm going to leave my anchor for last, so of course I'm going to talk to Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis, yes. Good afternoon, I'm Mr. Davis from the Benders Primary School. I'm responsible for teaching four, five, and six math. And the problems that I'm having at school, I would echo some of the sentiments um, from uh, Mr. Byers and Miss Willa. Um, the parents. The Bible says charity begins at home. <laughs> and I believe that teaching too should at least begin at home, right? I find that when the children leave the school, it, like, it is like the teaching stops there. <coughs> when they get home, the parents, they don't know what they're doing at school, they're not connected with the school. We need to get the, the parents more involved, get them connected with what's happening at the school. Also, reading is a big problem, especially when it comes to the word problems and so forth. We are having a lot of problems with that. So, we have students sometimes that don't even know the letter sounds, right? They are having problems with sight words and so forth. So, that is one of the problems that are hindering us in terms of where, where we want to reach in mathematics. Also, students are not getting the practice that they want, that they need to get at school. I find sometimes the young teachers, as Mr. Bear said before, they're not aware, and they sometimes they don't know how to get across a concept. So sometimes they need to dialogue with their senior teachers and see how we get things done. Right? Tables also is another problem. Students today, the mental math is a problem. I find that I'm a man, I'm, 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 I'm at the age, what, 37, and I have a better memory than some of the students who are young. The students, I find that they, they learn something today and then tomorrow they forget. And I find that weird, mm -hmm. right? So, with that, I think basically that's, that's my problem. Thank huh? you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And he represented Bendel's Primary. Yeah. And now I come to my uncle, oh, who will really be here holding me in the storm, all right? <laughs> yes, uh -huh. Mr. Okay. Brown. Okay. Good afternoon, I'm Mr. Brown, <laughs> going to Primary School. This is grade six at this time. I'm going to say what all my colleagues have said, that's the problem we have in our school at Golden Grove School. However, the students and parents need to understand that mathematics is not just for school, <laughs> it's a home team too. When you send your children to the shop, they need to tell you how much change they get back before they even ask them. They can tell, hey, I got back $50 from the $100, and I get all what they send me to buy. Yeah. And that's part of mathematics. Mm -hmm. And also, when you send, you tell them to do something, you can time them also. Timing is also part of mathematics. And this is what we're having problem with the students, they don't know timing either. But if we give them two minutes to do a, a problem, suddenly you have to wait 15 minutes for them to finish. <laughs> and timing is going to be a very important part, especially in the exams. The exams deal with time. <laughs> Once again, I tell you, at Golden Grove, we get in here, in the next. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these are the faces of some of the teachers we have in our schools, and we are not giving up. So it's not a matter that I'm just here, 
and it's just a cosmetic affair that I'm dealing with and just saying, oh yes, nice people meet you and say, I'm learning mathematics. We want it to be real. We are going at the root. We are hitting the foundation. And maybe Sean's death will awaken us and awaken that spirit within us to make certain that we continue. Because this is now brought to the front and to the face of Antigua and the world, some of the students. These are the teachers I call my trainees of trainers in the primary school. One apologies that Miss, Ni Miss Nicholas, she's not here today, but at still she is not in the classroom now. So right away, these are the people going into the classroom and whose minds and lives and attitude I should be impacting. You hear them talking about tables? Did they watch when we did that table and show how short these children can be? So afterward, I'm going to see each one of them and tell them I have to be at the school and I will be the one taking the tables with the students because seemingly their method is out of date. <laughs> All right? At this point, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. And once we have given you an idea of what we think the status of mathematics is in Antigua and Barbuda, I'm going to give my teachers a chance to reminisce on our colleague, Sean, whom we'll be taking home on Wednesday. Okay. If you know the answer to a question is incorrect and you cannot find the mistake, start over on a clean piece of paper. Oftentimes when you try to correct a problem, you continually overlook the mistake. Starting over on a clean piece of paper will let you focus on the question, not on trying to find the error. Always read my problems completely before beginning any calculations. If you glance too quick at a problem, you may misunderstand what really needs to be done to solve the problem. So we are back, and of course we've given you a taste of what the situation is in our schools. We will be coming from time to time, and these people, they'll be walking up that step a bit faster. Now they know it's nothing so bad or too grand, and that you're going to be saying the public wants to hear, okay? And what better place than to come into the Center for Mathematics Education, because that's where we are. We haven't had an opening as yet, because we don't have structure. And we're not going to bring you to something to pretend. But we, we too are getting there. And it's the first in the Caribbean that we have a mathematics center for research. I have the information. And so, yes, Antigua is going to be the first for everything. Already we know the Master in Mathematics is on YouTube. You can go, type in, and you can get so in their own time. They can also come to the center, get the things on a memory stick or buy a disc, and so in their own time. So we're taking the learning out of the classroom. And as Mr. Davis said, we don't want them to think that the bell has gone, the end of the day, shut the books, and that's it. No. They control their education and the process of learning. There is one member I forgot from this team, and that is my colleague and teacher right up in Willikis, and that is Sharon Brown. She would have been with us today, but actually, they will tell you, I get this brainwave and new thing coming in, and I would just be saying to my teachers, drop what you're doing right now and come. Well, Sharon could not afford to do that this morning, so she's not with us today because the transport was not in place. But she, too, has expressed her desire to be with us another time. So I am going to get her, and she will be here, and with some of her students, too. But right now, guys, how can I forget that Monday morning? Walking down the road, out southern side of Parham School with my dog Snowden, going for his morning walk and hearing that there is a breaking news. And to my chagrin, a primary school teacher, a part-time bus driver, found dead. I froze, but then I said, I hope it's not Sean, and dismissed it. And as I said, my anchor called, and it was true. 
the rest is history. Today, I want to give my teachers, you see them here, but we do cry. Because how can we go on? But we know we believe in a God. And he says he will be with me. And I want our school students to understand when bad things happen to good people, that is not the will of God. But God is there to be our solace and our comfort and to ask us to use bad things to project something good for society. Guys, I want you to express to the Antiguan public, to the education community, and to Sean's family just exactly what we are feeling right now. And this time, I'm going to start with my uncle because after that, he will take us through. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a very sad occasion for me mm -hmm. because Sean Williams and I have really cousins come from the same village of all road. And also, Zone 1 as well is a very good math teacher also. Mm -hmm. He's also part of our mathematics in Zone 1 team, along with other folk here, Mr. Byers, Mr. Samuel, and Mr. Joseph. So all of us, we're going to miss him. Mm -hmm. But then, as I say, the world must continue. And I strongly believe as teachers, we <coughs> mourn the loss of, of our colleague, and also we think that Zoma should do something in memory of him. I think they should rename the mass quiz to maybe Sean Williams quiz or something like that. And to the family, that's about deepest sympathy. Words cannot express the way we feel at this time because up to now it's still a shocking moment for me because I saw Sean every day of the week <laughs> except Saturdays and Sundays. And when I heard that he has passed, it really tragic time for me. I couldn't even work on that Monday morning. Sure. I just went to work and just relaxed. Didn't even teach because uh -huh. you know I have very close trying to hold back the tears but there are times I know I can't hold it back. Uh -huh. I want to accept the family. May God continue to bless you and keep the faith. Because if you was faithful and you remain faithful one of these days we will meet again. Amen. And Carlos looks like the most stable person right now that can jump in after this foundation has been laid. <laughs> uh, Sean is a ma mathematics teacher. He was a very good teacher. And he'll be deeply missed. Um, a part of the Zone 1 maths team, when we get together and organize and plan what we're going to do for mathematics in the zone. Um, I worked along with him uh, marking common entrance, yeah. The common entrance mathematics papers and we were good friends as well and it was very sad to hear of his passing and in such a tragic way. Mm -hmm. uh, Deepest sympathy is to his family. I know that they're not taking it well, but God will provide. Mm -hmm. And I hope that the, the Justice Department will be able to find a solution to his death and find out who was the culprit and take charge of that. Thanks. Okay, and although Alison thinks she's not going to say anything, I don't care if the tears come, but she is going to talk this morning. Because one of the things that my supervisor and my head principal told me one time, when you grieve, the more you talk about it, the better. So with the tears running, let us hear you. Five minutes, so, yeah, um, so go ahead, just chat. We're a close-knit family, Marcus here. And we're in a vulnerable state because we lost Sean. Sean and I were like, Brother and sister, mm -hmm. and Sean, we love you, mm -hmm. and we miss you. All right, we luck. Yes, a short thing. Yes, not putting you through anything along. Five minutes we have. For me, I know that I will miss when you how are you? Mm -hmm. When you how is the car? When you know your friend is doing today, and she's doing well. Those are the things I miss 
my many modest day greeting, my yeah. Christmas greeting. Okay, right. Mr. Davis, yes, let's cut her off. Yes, yes, so, yes, don't go. I was a passionate mm -hmm. math teacher. Mm -hmm. he was, I was an industrious teacher, hard working. He was a friendly person. A uh, person that you could approach, mm -hmm. talk to. I can just reminisce on some of the jokes that we made right. when we were marking, some of the conversations we had. Mm -hmm. From time to time, his face come to me right. as I reminisce. Up to this day, the news is just like, mm -hmm. have not been sinking in it. Right. It's not, um, right. I'm still disturbed. Right. It's very disturbing. And I want to say deepest sympathy go to the family. And I pray that you just, they hold their head up, hold their heads up and be strong at this time. And I always wish them all the best. Right. Oliver, what are we saying this time? Schoolmate, mm -hmm. colleague. And most of all, just driving in here today. And usually when I drive to school, he'll be driving to Old Wood. Right. And all I hear is, Buddy! Right. <laughs> you know, and then I say, yes, buddy! <laughs> yes. And you know, after the incident and driving to school on a daily basis, and not hearing Bonnie, mm -hmm. I'm still, still at a loss, still, still, I'm still shocked. Just sitting here, and Sean is not in front of me. All right. Um, but with God's will, we'll get through. My condolences to the family, and may God continue to richly bless you and keep you. All right, Mr. Piles. Sean was a very good friend of mine. We worked for a number of years at Old Road School, always collaborating on what we have to do in uh, mathematics in the school, and. Um, yeah, literally, I was very close to both sides of his family. Mm -hmm. And I miss him a lot because he always called me chaplain. Mm -hmm. right? Every time we pass in each other. And really and truly, we always kind of express how we feel right now. Yeah? And I just want to say my condolences to the family. And God will hold you. Right, so this is my second youngest teacher again dying. But when I remember the tragedy we felt waking up that morning and hearing about Stanard Edwards and to see how God has taken his family through, there are miracles around to tell us that we have just got to be brave and believe in the God we say and who has said to us, he will be with us all the time. I will be with you. And we just have to trust that. So today, Master in Mathematics has been a very special program. My teachers, they're extremely, extremely, you can see how tender they are because it is hard. But we are going to get through it. And I have to thank them for coming because as usual, Miss Western, crazy Auntie Karen just said, drop everything and come. Because yes, I know I had to touch base with them. And yes, I know I had to talk about the status of mathematics and to show you that in spite of our sorrows, we will go on. Thank you very much and thank you to the Antiguan public because we know you are with us and you know and we know you want us to do well and that mathematics is going to grow. Sean, we love you dearly and I am sending you home to Jesus because he says as long as you are my disciple there is a mansion that I have gone to prepare for you and I will take you under his wing to his earthly family. He is my cousin and people do not even realize that. All right. And he has said he will take you under his wing. So family, just be strong because God is with us. Thank you very much and see you again tomorrow. And at that time, we will be taking care of the students. Join us next time for another in the series, Mastering Mathematics. A production of the Education Broadcasting Unit in the Ministry of Education and ABS-TV.